Hi there, uh, my name is Peter Jansen. I am an assistant professor at the University of Arizona. Uh, and today I'd like to talk a bit about a short paper uh, to appear in findings of EMNLP uh, and presented here at the Spatial Language Understanding Workshop uh, that we've sort of been informally calling the No Vision Vision paper, um, but more formally, uh, Visually Grounded Planning Without Vision. Uh, language models can infer detailed plans from high level instructions. To give a bit of context for this paper, um, recently a number of virtual embodied agent tasks have been proposed that require a virtual agent to perform some task in an environment, typically by receiving a high-level natural language directive for what the user wants the agent to perform, and then the agent has to break down that uh, directive into a series of actions uh, that it actually has to perform in that virtual environment uh, to finish that task and complete it correctly. Um, one such environment and challenge that's fairly hot off the press is the Ask for Alfred challenge, uh, which requires a virtual agent to navigate a complex 3D virtual home environment and complete sort of common everyday tasks. Um, Alfred's distinguishing features from other virtual environment tasks are first, uh, that the agent requires actually interacting with the environment has to pick up objects, move them, turn on appliances, and so on uh, to complete the task successfully. Um, and second, this sort of rich interactive environment has eight possible actions, uh, about 50 objects, about 26 places to put or place the objects, uh, which make the action space generally uh, vastly more complex than sort of previous virtual environments, um, like Anderson's popular room-to-room -room environment. Uh, and so this complexity is reflected in the task performance. The baseline models presented by the Alfred team are able to successfully complete uh, less than 1% of the task successfully. And the winner of a shared task uh, that just finished at ECCV uh, successfully completed, I think, less than 5% of these successfully. So the task is quite hard. Uh, typically, uh, as one might expect, uh, the models tend to perform these sort of visually grounded language tasks, typically by combining both text input in the form of that natural language directive, as well as visual input in the form of pixels, say, from the environment. Um, but a number of recent papers have shown that, at least on much simpler environments like room to room, that when they run ablation studies on their models, the models that use input from only a single modality, like text or vision, uh, seem to perform not that much worse than sort of the full model. Um, and so that begs sort of the, the kind of ridiculous question, how well could a visually grounded agent perform if we gave it no visual input, if we used a model that was primarily intended for dealing with text? And that's the question that this uh, study asks. Um, so taking a step back for a moment, you might have the question, as some of my reviewers did, on why you would ever want to try and do this, why you would ever want to try and do visual semantic planning without visual input. Um, I have a mix of a cognitive and a computer science background, and so I'd like to quickly show a high-level motivating example. Uh, if someone asks you, imagine you're walking into a kitchen you've never been before, and someone asks you to slice an apple, what are the steps that you'd take? You'd probably say something like, I'd walk over to the counter, I'd pick up an apple, I'd go over to the drawer, I'd pick up a knife, and then I'd walk back over to the apple and slice it. And that's a good plan, and it'll probably work and be pretty accurate in most kitchens that you're likely to encounter. But then say you find yourself in a specific kitchen, and instead of the apples being on the counter, they're on the table. You could then modify your initial nearly accurate plan with a small change, and it would now be entirely accurate. You'd be able to complete the task successfully by grounding your general hypothetical plan in that specific environment. And so again, that's basically what this study is about, those sort of top box here on visual semantic planning. How well could we perform on the visual semantic planning task, this sort of hypothetical general level task, using language input alone without any visual input? Um, and to spoil the story a little bit, the answer seems to be we can do pretty well on this. So 
To help ground this task a bit more, in Alfred, the virtual agent is given a natural language directive for an everyday task such as this one, uh, wash the fork and put it away. And what the model normally has to do is reduce that directive into a series of steps like going to the countertop and picking up a fork, going to the sink, washing the fork, and so on and so forth, uh, that perform that task in one of the dozens of virtual home environments that are in Alfred. Um, and a number of frames from one particular kitchen environment is shown here. And so inherent in executing that directive in that virtual environment is the subtask of coming up with that series of steps that have to be performed to complete the task successfully. And that subtask, the coming up with a series of steps, is called visual semantic planning. The visual semantic planning task, specifically here going from that language directive to the visual semantic plan, is what this paper is specifically addressing. Um, and as we see here, the visual semantic plan in Alfred is represented as a sequence of tuples, typically triples. Uh, there's a command like go to or pick up or clean, uh, followed by one or two arguments uh, to that action, which are typically objects or receptacles uh, that the objects interact with. <clears throat> so methods. Um, the Alfred dataset contains over 6,000 gold command sequences, uh, and each one is between 3 and 20 elements long, with the average being 7.5 elements. Um, again, each element is a triple uh, that contains the command and any arguments. Uh, there's 8 possible commands, uh, over 50 possible objects, and 26 possible things that you can put objects in or on, so the action space is uh, quite large compared to uh, other environments that are out there today. Um, and critically, each of these command sequences is paired with typically three high-level natural language descriptions, which are the task directives, uh, which are things like put a cold apple on the table that tell the agent what to do. Um, in this paper, uh, the visual semantic planning task is modeled as a sequence-to-sequence -sequence translation problem, where the input is the natural language task directive, and the output is the gold command sequence. Uh, this paper looks at two language models for doing uh, sequence-to-sequence -sequence learning, a sort of baseline RNN encoder decoder similar to an LSTM model uh, that's been pre-initialized with 300-dimensional glove embeddings, um, as well as uh, GPT-2, which is a very large language model that's been pre-trained on about 40 gigabytes of text. Um, and so a uh, quick look at results. Um, remarkably, what we see is that both models perform extremely well at this task for having no visual input. Um, and the performance of both models is typically only a few points uh, away from each other um, in performance, uh, with the best por uh, performing model being GPT-2. Um, GPT-2 is able to perfectly recover the gold command sequences from the natural language directive alone without any visual input in 26% of cases, which is really a huge effect size for having absolutely no visual input. Um, interestingly, if you sort of look at the data, a large number of the errors are on that first command in the sequence, which is nearly always a go-to uh, command to go to the starting location of the, the action sequence. And so if you take that one out, simulating the model having sort of a very small amount of visual input, namely the, the starting location of the action sequence, uh, the performance more than doubles, successfully recovering 58% of gold command sequences, which is more than half, um, which is really sort of wild. Um, performance on the, in the paper is also broken down uh, in a bit more detail. I'm only showing a, a little bit here. Um, I won't speak too much to it except to say that it's sort of much as you'd expect if you know that bit of the story. Um, if you look at performance on just triples, then nearly 70% of them are correct, which is quite large. Uh, and if you look at just commands, it's over 90% correct. Uh, the paper also breaks down performance by command, uh, and again, I won't speak too much uh, to these uh, in this short talk, except to say that it's sort of what you'd expect as well. The commands that are more highly spatial, like go to, which tend to go to action or go to locations, uh, tend to have the lowest performance. 
Um, but this one here um, is a little bit unexpected. Um, large pre-trained transformer models like GPT-2 are known for being able to perform reasonably well on tasks, even with relatively few training examples of the so-called few shot uh, performance. And this plot here shows model performance as a function of downsampled training data. So the top blue line is the full training data set, um, where the lower series are 25% of the training data, 10% of the training data, and only 1% of the training data um, down there at the bottom. So that bottom red case, 1%, is the few shot case where each of the subtasks in Alfred are seeing only about four command sequences each. Um, and the GPT-2 model is still able to go from the natural language directive to gold command sequences in about 8% of cases, uh, which is pretty remarkable. It actually goes up to about 10% if you just keep on training it as well. So in terms of an error analysis, uh, this table shows the proportions of a handful of common error classes for 100 randomly selected predictions that didn't quite match the gold case. Um, and we see a few interesting things. Uh, one, nearly half of cases are wrong because they're predicting an incorrect location. That, of course, is not at all surprising. The model has no visual input. Um, but sort of the flip side is that in only 4% of cases does it predict the wrong object to interact with. So it generally knows what objects it needs to perform the task and how to use them. It just doesn't know where they are in the environment. And presumably that could be remedied by incorporating that information into a slightly more complex model. Um, so second, uh, there's a handful of triple level errors that suggest in some cases the model doesn't fully know what it needs to do, while in others it suggests that the model probably makes a workable visual semantic plan, but that plan just doesn't happen to match what the gold semantic plan is. So the performance is likely a little bit higher than the 58%. It's likely an underestimate. Um, and third, uh, there actually appear to be a fairly significant number of cases where the gold instructions and task directives in Alfred have errors themselves, um, which likely places a hard ceiling of probably around 80 to 90% on how well sort of any model could realistically perform on the data set as it stands. So to ground what one common error class looks like, here's a location error, which again is the most common kind of error in the analysis. Uh, the task directive here is to move a slice of cold bread to the microwave. Um, and one of the interesting things here is that the predicted plan is very close to the gold plan, and it would probably actually work if you executed it in the environment. Um, in both cases, the model slices the bread, then it cools the bread in the fridge, and then it heats the bread up in the microwave. Where they disagree, is that the gold command sequence, once it's done slicing the bread, it discards the knife in the fridge and the predicted model discards the knife in the microwave. Both are sort of a bit weird. Um, and one is a fire hazard. We probably don't want robots in our houses trying to microwave cutlery. Um, and But this kind of error is actually surprisingly common. 15% uh, of the errors uh, that uh, that were examined here disagree on where cutlery should be disposed of. So it's actually a remarkably common uh, error class. Um, and so sort of more generally, it's likely that artifacts in the data pose sort of methodological challenges in measuring the true visual semantic planning performance. Um, and in terms of uh, sort of the context here is that GPT-2 is likely doing much better than the 58% in terms of generating plans that would likely work. <clears throat> Uh, so in summary, uh, we can use large language models like GPT-2 to perform visual semantic planning on Alfred using text alone without any visual input. And that allows us to predict gold visual semantic plans in over a quarter of cases, which is a very large number. Um, when we let the model know the starting location, this increases to 58%, which is over half of cases. Uh, the error analysis suggests sort of both uh, obvious and surprising sources of error that point to some interesting methodological challenges and uh, that suggests that 58% is likely an underestimate of the model's performance here. 
Um, and this is a fairly clear and, uh, to me at least, remarkable demonstration that language models are able to perform visual semantic planning at sort of a generic level extremely well using text alone. Um, this sort of begs for somebody to couple this planning module with uh, another module that grounds those uh, and allows those to run in specific virtual environments that looks for the cups and the apples and whatnot to slice. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, the paper code data uh, output, if you just want to use the output of the model uh, to run your models without having to run this one, uh, as well as the analyses are all available on GitHub uh, at the link shown here. Thanks.